Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the Adams Brothers Podcast. We are here with our beautiful and very sexy cousin, Jessica, boss lady, Morales. How you doing that, cousin? I'm doing real good, real good. Good to be <laughs> here with y'all. Hey, well, we're happy to have you here on the uh, Adams Brothers Podcast. Of course, we're family, and we want to... Yes, put you out there and help you blow up real big so you can be on Def Comedy Jams and hosting the uh, comedy at the improv and uh, all of that. All of that good stuff. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I introduce you, but go ahead and tell us who you are. See, when I'm not on stage, I'm Jessica Morales, the wife, the mother that I am. But when I'm on the stage, I'm just with the mess, you know. They can't hush me because I just got too much to say, and that's me. <laughs> now, when when you were when you were growing up in the house with all of our cousins, uh, mm-hmm. were you the kind of like the comedian of all of the family there, or did you like you like used to crack jokes on the rest of the family? How did you get started like- in comedy? Yeah, I would definitely like to say that I was the comedian because remember, it's 10 of us. I'm the ninth child. So I was the one that was just sitting back and watching everybody mess up, just looking at everybody's mistakes. And I'm, I'm like, nah, I'm probably talking to like my 18 year old brother or sister. Like, what is you doing? Like, mm-hmm. you, you don't know right from wrong. So I would like to say it did start in the house. I like to uh, say my household was kind of like high school to me. Right, right. That's the best way to explain that. Right, right. So, so what are some of the comedy clubs that, that you have performed in already? Okay, so, so far I did my breaking, uh, my breakout uh, comedy show at the Palm Beach Improv, which was a big deal. I took a comedy class and then we did like a graduation show. So that was my first show. And then I got one coming up tomorrow in Miami at the Laugh House, Miami Laugh House. And that's going to be my second performance. But from what I'm hearing, they say that I'm the number one draft pick. So, Ooh. you know, I got I got to hold up to that. Nah, I got to gotta, I gotta come through tomorrow. Okay. Okay. What time does that start tomorrow? Uh, doors open up at six o'clock and it's going to be quite a few comics. They're going to have vendors and a lot going on. This is actually their first event too at the Miami Laugh House. Right. Miami Laugh House. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And is there any more, uh, any like, is there any like, who's going to be headlining that, that comedy, uh, show tomorrow night? His name is Polo John. Now, I honestly was just on Facebook. Somebody tagged me in the post. They were looking for comics and stuff like that. So I just hit them up like, I do comedy. I'm trying to do this, you know. And, you know, he hit me back up. And he's supposed to be a headliner. I don't know him, but I was on a Zoom call with him. And some people just look funny. Like, and he looked funny. So I'm hoping he come through, too. Okay. Wayne? Yeah. Okay, because... Uh... Do you write your own material, your routine? I do. I do. I always, I always used to want to be like an entertainer. Like I used to see myself, this was back then. I wanted to be on Disney Channel and stuff like that, one of them kids. But you know how it could be when you're growing up and some people just don't see what you see within yourself. So the writing was so easy to me, but I do rehearse it. I get pointers on how to make this funnier, but I definitely write my own material. Okay, and how long do it take you to prepare uh, whenever you're writing your own material or just preparing to go on stage? How long do it take you to prepare? So my first show, I knew that I was funny because like a lot of people be like, you funny, but it's like I wasn't trying to be funny. People basically think like reality is funny because they used to being lied to and people telling lies rather than just keeping it real with them. So when they hear the truth, they think the truth is funny. So when I realized that all I'd be doing is telling the truth, and I took this comedy class, it was a five-week class, and he was just teaching us how to tell your jokes and stuff like that. And it maybe was like the third week when I realized, okay, I'm just talking, but I got to be funnier, like make it funnier. So I would say it takes me at least two weeks, one week of writing my material, and maybe like another week of just remembering my material. Mm-hmm. And what tips would you give to someone else that's trying to break into uh, comedy? 
I will honestly tell them to be yourself. Whatever is the first thing come to your mind when you see something, say it. Because I'm pretty sure it's just going to be fun. Just say it. Don't overthink. If that looked like whatever it looked like when you first see it, just say it. And trust me, it's going to be funny. So that's why I definitely tell them. Okay, Daryl, you can go on. And I got two more questions after. Who's cause who is your who's your favorite comedian that you really like out of all of the comedians out there, female or male? Well, let me ask you this question. Who's your favorite male uh, com comedian and who's your favorite female comedian? Bernie Mac. All right. I love I love Bernie Mac because he make me feel like me. Like he just gonna say what's on his mind. He say the first thing that he used to think about. So yes, definitely Bernie Mac. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say Monique. She was she would be like my funniest or my favorite female comedian. I used to like some more, but as I got older, I realized, oh no, I think I'm funnier than some more. So yeah. yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You well on your way <laughs> to being way funnier than some more. And uh, I watched your uh, your uh, when you were on stage at the improv, and I really enjoyed right. the, the clip that I saw. And, and I mean, the, the sky's the limit for you. I, you you are very funny, and uh, we I, I wish you the best of luck, man. I tell you, I, we had to get you on this podcast so they could see hey. your face before you blow up. I appreciate that so much, but what's so funny is before, like, while I'm walking to the improv, I'm just trying to rehearse. Like, I'm like, I don't want to get up there. I don't want to mess up. And right before I got on the stage, like, I was so nervous. But when I got on the stage, it was like, I could do this. I could I could do this. Like, I should have kept going, man. I killed it. Like, them nerves, they ain't nothing compared to what you know you can do. Well, you know you could do it. Forget about what you feel and just do it. Did you, did you take you a couple shots before you went on stage? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did that. Definitely. Well, that's all right. I Whatever did, it takes to settle you down, good. you know? Yeah. Take you a shot or two. Don't get drunk because then you might forget what you need to be saying, but uh -huh. definitely yeah. take you a shot or two. Calm them <laughs> nose. Okay. Definitely. Wayne? Wayne? Yes, uh, Jessica. And since you said about you know you were you were kind of you know kind of had you were afraid of that person when you went on stage, what happens if the audience don't laugh? Do you panic? No, I'm just gonna get on the audience like oh so y'all don't think I'm funny like like what what do y'all want to hear me talk about? So I just go to the audience, let them holler out what they want me to talk about, let them holler out anything that they gotta say about me and make a joke off of that. Right. Yeah. And, and, and how do you deal with a heckler who just won't, you know, who just keep going on in the audience out there? How do you deal with a heckler? They got to come on stage. Now it's me versus them. They got to come on stage and, and see who real funny. Is you funnier than me or what? Because they want to be a comedian and I want to see if they think it's as easy as sitting in the crowd and just yelling out stuff. So I definitely call them to the stage. Mm -hmm. and, and I put you them on the spot. About, you were talking about Bernie Mac and, and uh, uh, Monique and some more. What are your five? What are your five top comedians in the order of being funny? Bernie Mac, Eddie Griffin, Monique. I'm gonna have to say Martin, and I like Dave Chappelle. I like them. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, and this is my uh, final question for, for me. What are your feelings about the industry, the comedy industry in general? I feel that, honestly, the sky is the limit because funny is funny. It don't matter who you are, what you are. If you're funny, people are going to laugh because there's a wide variety of people that you can reach with comedy. Like, it's not a certain amount of people that laugh. Everybody laughs, you know? So if you got if you got the ability to make people laugh, pursue it. Do it. Get paid for doing it. You know, don't be around here, oh, you funny. Now pay me for being funny, <laughs> you know? So I definitely right. get paid for it. But it's, it's for everybody. Like, I don't think it's just for one gender or nothing like that because... I got some things to say, and I ain't gonna be hushed. Mm -mm. You know what? I wish back in the days. I wish you could have bought your uncle fella on because hey. he 
should have been <laughs> on stage. No doubt about that. Fella had the talent to be that, I bet. that, that next Martin of our family. He, he <laughs> had that And Daryl, too. Let me say uh -huh. Daryl, too. Daryl wasn't far behind, but Fella was the, was the best. Hey, it's gonna be my auntie Darlene that shut everybody up, though. <laughs> they they weren't gonna be ready for her. <laughs> they are, their calling was believe it, this is the truth. I really feel this way. My cousins Darlene, Fella, and Daryl, they call it was comedy. That was Definitely. their calling. It, it was. They were funny. If you if they <laughs> you you be around them, they would have you on the floor laughing till your stomach is hurt. That hey, was their that calling. is true. I agree with you, though. I definitely do. And don't forget about Aunt Maisie and your grandmother. She was hey. funny and all outdoors, too. That's where they get it from. Aunt Maisie, too. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. But it's me who's going to use it to my best ability. There you go. That's what I'm going to do. And I always I, remember. I'm so glad and I'm proud of you because Daryl was always telling me about you. So yep. I'm definitely, I definitely in the future, I definitely want to check one of your shows. Hey, I too. definitely appreciate it. And I know for a fact from my heart, my mind, my soul, this is only just the beginning. This Absolutely. is just the beginning because it just comes so naturally that I know this is what I want to do and I know this is what I'm going to do. So hey, I appreciate y'all in this interview for even putting me out like this, though. I appreciate that. Anytime when you blow up real big and you start making all those millions and millions of dollars you know? and you're living in that big house, don't forget about your two cousins. And I, Wayne and Daryl yeah. right here on this podcast here. Say yes, hey, sir, I cannot. <laughs> this this video gonna follow me through my whole career, my first interview. You there know? You go. There you it's go. gonna follow me. Y'all with me. There you go. Definitely. Once yes. again, we he are always, here. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I can't wait till this COVID-19 over. Like I said, with COVID over with, I'll definitely come check out the show. Make and I appreciate it. Definitely. It's definitely going to be plenty more to come. That's for sure. You have anything else, Wayne? That's it for me, Daryl. Okay. Once again, this is our beautiful and very sexy cousin, Jessica okay. Boss Lady. Morales <laughs> right here. She's going to be the next up and coming big comedian that's going to blow up worldwide. Cuz we wish you the very best. Yes. And uh, you always welcome to come back on the Adam Brothers podcast. Definitely. Your family, Definitely. we welcome you here on this podcast anytime you right. want to come. Anytime. Definitely. All Definitely. Right, I appreciate it. You're All welcome. Right, Thanks for stopping by and good luck. We love you and we'll see you here in the future. All right. Love always. All right, cousin.